what we recall. So um, in this class, again, we're just going to do a quick little review on trigonometry. And what we're going to do is we're going to review the good old unit circle. All right. Now, the important thing about the unit circle was, again, guys, the unit circle came from basically just a triangle. But it's a triangle on the x and y coordinate system. And basically what we figured out, well, if you put a triangle, a right triangle, on the coordinate system, right, with the hypotenuse of 1, that was the unit circle, then any point on the unit circle could be represented as x comma y. Right? And we like this because even though we re remembered that sine, cosine, tangent, you know, were like comparisons of sides of a triangle, like opposite over hypotenuse, you know, adjacent over hypotenuse, and blah, 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 blah. It was we found some um, we found some shortcuts by using the unit circle. For instance, when I asked you on like your test or midterm, when I said, what is the cosine of pi over six? You guys didn't draw a triangle figure out the 30, 60, 90 triangle, and then do adjacent or hypotenuse, right? That took too long. Basically, what you guys did is, oh, well, I know that the cosine of pi over 6 is basically the coordinate point on the unit circle that correlates to pi over 6, which is the x coordinate, so it's square root of 3 over 2, right? And that was very quick for us. Um, and again, that still is a 30, 60, 90 triangle that just got compressed into our unit circle. So what we did is we came up with these shortcuts, sine of theta is equal to the y-coordinate, cosine of theta is equal to the x-coordinate, and tangent of theta is equal to the y over the x. Then we also introduced our reciprocal functions, right? Adj hypotenuse over opposite, hy hypotenuse over adjacent, and opposite over adjacent. So therefore, or adjacent over opposite. So that would have been cosecant of theta is 1 over y, secant of theta is 1 over x, and cotangent of theta is x over y. So I'm not telling you anything different already that you don't already know, correct? All right. But now what we're going to do is I'd like to transform these functions. I'd like us to think about these six trigonometric functions in a different light. Rather than thinking of them as a ratio of sides of a triangle, or rather than thinking of them as coordinate points on the unit circle, let's think about them in relationship to one another. So what I mean by that is, can we rewrite these six trigonometric functions using only trigonometric functions? So for instance, sine of theta equals y. That means y is equal to sine of theta. right? That's that relationship of the equation. So if you look at tangent, tangent of theta is y over x. Then does it make sense in our understanding to just rewrite that as sine of theta over cosine of theta? That makes some kind of sense, right? So now what I'd like you to do is see if you guys can come up the, with the rest of the relationships. Okay. Now my recommendation for you is to go ahead and work on this side first, and then try to see if you can figure out these three. But this side is going to be your easiest one. Just try to see if you guys can figure them out. Just Based on your understanding of x and y's, you know how are things going to um, go ahead and relate to one another? And I think it's fairly obvious with those first couple. Like, and I'll just help you guys out. Cosine of theta over sine of theta, right? And then you could say, let's skip over this. Secant then is one over cosine of theta, and Usually, students get to this point pretty easily. It makes relative sense. All they're doing is replacing x with cosine, y with sine. Yep. So usually, where we have difficulty or where students stop is when we look at the sine, cosine, tangent, and cotangent again. So again, what this comes into is understanding the relationships between a function and its reciprocal. Remember, guys, these are reciprocal functions, right? Sine is y, cosecant is 1 over y. And again, you can think about this as like y over 1, right? Because remember when you do the reciprocal, you're just flipping them. Like 3 over 4, the reciprocal is 4 over 3. So think about it this way. If cosecant is 1 over sine, and sine is the reciprocal of that, that means we could also write sine as 
Okay, let's put it this way. Having trouble. Cosecant of theta equals 1 over sine. If I said solve for sine, mathematic plus solve for sine, what would you do? Well, you'd have to get sine off the denominator, so you'd multiply by sine of theta on both sides. So therefore, you'd now be left with sine of theta times cosecant of theta equals 1. And if I said solve for sine, now you would divide by cosecant of theta. So therefore, sine of theta equals 1 over cosecant of theta. And in terms of that reciprocal relationship, does that kind of make a little bit of sense? If, C, if cosecant and sine are reciprocals of one another, and 1 over sine is equal to cosecant, then 1 over cosecant should equal sine. Yes? So now we can just follow that pattern with cosine. Well, that's 1 over secant of theta. Now, you guys can notice I did sine and, or tangent and cotangent twice. Yes, this one's obvious. We like this one. That's probably the most popular we're going to use. But don't forget, tangent and cotangent are reciprocals of one another. So we can also use that in their relationship. We can also write this as 1 over tangent as well as 1 over cotangent. Now, we have some names for these, actually. These are what we call the reciprocal. The reciprocal identities. And these are called the quotient identities. Do you have to know them? Yes. Do you have to memorize them? No. Why? Because you're going to do enough examples in this class, you're not going to need to memorize them. Okay? 